Welcome to Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Turn, State of California, meeting of June 22nd, 2022. Madam Clerk, may we have the roll, please? Commissioner Ayon? Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Albright? Commissioner Ayon here. Thank you. Commissioner Albright? Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Parlier? Commissioner Sanders? Commissioner Saragoza? Here. Commissioner Albright? <laughs> Commissioner Sanders? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Zaragoza, would you lead us in the pledge? Sure. Please stand and face flag. Please salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Our teleconference meeting requirements. Discussion and possible minute action, meeting protocol. A motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing, all is required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. Mr. Knox. Is my recommendation to approve finding of a state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing as per the requirements of AB 361. Is there public comment on this item? No? Uh, do we have commission comment? Um, may I have a motion? Motion by Motion to approve standard. Motion Second McKibben. Everybody wants to help tonight. <laughs> so that Sanders motion and McKibben second. May we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is approval of the minutes of May 25th uh, meeting. Uh, is there public comment on the minutes approval? Is there a commission comment? And may I hear a motion to approve? Motion by Zaragoza to approve. Zaragoza, motion. Second, McKibben. McKibben, second. Could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Commissioner
Commissioner Couch? Hello. I'm a yes. I'm a yes. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Commissioner. Okay, Fowler? so I'm I'm finally. This is this is Richard Albright. I'm finally on the phone line. I'm trying to get on the Zoom, but I I don't know what's happened. Commissioner Albright, we're working on approval of the minutes. Would you vote in favor of approval? Yes. Vote. Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the Commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the Commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Madam Clerk, do we have anyone online? No. All right, we'll go on to notice public hearings. First is uh, 1793 City of Bakersfield annexation number 705 Panama 26 island annexation process Mr. Knox yes that's uh, proceeding number 1798 1798 yes tonight we have four city of Bakersfield island annexations in many ways they are similar but each has its own unique qualities I will try not to repeat myself more than necessary it's also important that each annexation is heard on its own merit let me start with what makes an island annexation unique. There are several people here who may not be familiar with the process, including some new commissioners. When the commission is using the normal annexation process, the commission can make a discretionary decision based on the merits of the application, local conditions, etc. If approved, the voters and property owners then have the opportunity to protest the commission's decision unless there's 100% landowner consent and the commission has waived the protest hearing process. Using the island annexation provision in state law, specifically government section, code section 56375.3, if an annexation meets certain conditions, the commission no longer has discretion and the annexation must be approved. In addition, the protest hearing is waived, removing any vote pro property owners have over the process. The conditions in a landowner annexation include that it be less than 150 acres, is completely or substantially surrounded, not in a community service district or a gated community, not prime farmland, uh, it has availability of public services and utilities, presence of public improvements, and a presence of physical improvements upon the parcels or parcels within the area. It also will benefit from the change of organization or reorganization or, re or is receiving benefits from the annexing city. If anyone here believes this pro provision is problematic, please know that there are commissioners and staff that sympathize with your concerns. Regardless, my role in the process is always to point the commission towards compliance with the law. Starting with Panama 25, this area is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. By definition, this is considered an unincorporated island. Technically, and if we can get the map up uh, for this annexation, technically it's two islands with a railroad right away between the two that was brought into the city with a previous annexation. This annexation meets all the requirements in section B of government code section 56375.3 is therefore eligible for the use of this provision. Uh, let me talk a bit about zoning. Uh, the county zoning is M1PD light industrial precise developing at combining, MPM3PD heavy industrial precise development combining, and A exclusive agriculture. The city land use designation for the area is SI service industrial, LI light industrial, and RIA resource intensive agriculture. 
City land use designation for the area is SI Service Industrial, LI Light Industrial, and R1A Resource Intensive Agriculture, which all means that they are consistent with each other, the county and city um, uh, land use designations. This annexation is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There is no ag land conversion, and this is not prime farmland. There's no disadvantaged unincorporated community nearby. It's consistent with commission policies, conforms to the assessor parcels. There's no functional overlap with other agencies. Uh, the water supply is adequate, as there no additional water will be required at this time. There will be no tax increase. Uh, CEQA is handled on notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Uh, the applicant has also signed an indemnific indemnification agreement. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. LAFCO local policy calls for the applicant to hold a public meeting before bringing a proposed island annexation before this commission. Much of the work of this annexation goes back a year or more, making it difficult to hold a public meeting during the height of the pandemic. A public meeting is not also not really feasible with so few property owners. In its place, the city has provided a summary of their outreach, including mailings and responses. The city of Bakersfield has mailed announcements to voters and property owners that explains the annexation process and the services that will, will be provided by the city. We have received correspondence from property owners. Originally, the pre-zoning was inconsistent with the current use of a mini storage facility. The, the, pro the proposed annexation was postponed until the city could modify the pre-zoning to match the current use. As such, the property owner has removed opposition to annexation. A second property owner sent a letter this morning requesting the continuance of this item. The City of Bakersfield, Bakersfield will speak to the outreach that was conducted to the property owners of this annexation during the comment period. Until then, let me point out the memo in your packet from the City of, Baker, from the city of Bakersfield outlining their outreach. I requested this memo from the city in light of the COVID requirements that at the time and this commission's history of emphasis on notifications and outreach. According to the memo, all landowners were contacted back in January of 2021 and again in March of 2022. The city has worked with other landowners over the past year and a half to change the pre-zoning of the area to be consistent with the use. Continuing this IM will not change the city's that the city has met the requirements of the island annexation and this commission must approve. Annexation, the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that protest hearing be waived in accordance with government code section 56375.3. This code section requires a LAFCO commission to approve an annexation with protest hearing if, if the applica application meets several requirements. In review of the application, the city has met all these requirements. The process required in the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that commission deny the request of the property owner for continuance. Although the property owner is going to make a presentation uh, during public comment, and I reserve the right to change my recommendation if they have a compelling case. Um, in addition, Uh, the, the commission should determine that the criteria for annexation of an unincorporated island under section 56375.3 has been met and no exclusions have been identified or presented accordingly. The commission approved an annexation number 1798, Panama number 26 into the city of Bakersfield. The protest hearing is waived with condition recommended by the executive officer. This is a reorganization. Thank you, Mr. Knox. I think I failed to read something that I'm going to go ahead and read now in reference to Panama number 26. This proposal is to annex approximately 58.39 acres of land in two locations, generally located along the southwest and southeast corners of the Panama Lane and Progress Road intersection. 
the annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield for the purpose of minimizing the presence of county islands. The proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375.3, which requires notice hearing and waives protest hearing. Is there public comment on this item? Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Gary Hallen with the uh, City of Bakersfield. Uh, I, I did uh, just want to come and uh, speak to a couple of, of things, uh, uh, commissioners. And, and uh, again, I'm, I'm new to the city and I greatly would love to meet with each of you. I've, I've met with the uh, chair and and uh, with, uh, with another commissioner member, but I uh, want to uh, approach this in a very uh, cordial and collaborative way that uh, we have new leadership of the city and our policymakers, uh, our council uh, would like us to uh, start with partnerships and and uh, making sure that we're we're doing this in the right way. Um, talking about the outreach and really what are the purposes of island annexations and and my reading of the state law is because they are entirely surrounded and there are these very small pockets uh, to provide efficiency is, is the reason that the state law was passed for this this very uh, fact so to provide efficiency for who and for what is is probably the question that it gets asked and so I want to touch on some of the services that the city's focused on of how we can help these residents um, and and some of the things that that we're trying to do um, recently, uh, the last three years, uh, the city has p passed uh, its, its Measure N, which has given the city more resources to put towards some of, some of the things that are going on in and around the city that, that needed to be addressed. For example, there's, there's many more police officers on the street that, that hasn't been in the past. And that definitely greatly helps response times and helps uh, communities feel safer. Uh, so something that, that, the, that the city can now uh, provide more of and a better service for. Um, the other thing is uh, many of these communities in these pockets are on septic. Uh, the city's not going to require them to connect to city s sewer, but it's definitely an option for residents now that wasn't before, now that they're within the city. Uh, so if residents so choose to, and if, if they don't have the the means uh, the city is given a way for them to connect immediately and then repay uh, the connection fee and that cost over an eight-year period interest-free so again trying to to be that good partner uh, because that's a health and safety issue to have you know uh, clean safe and sanitary situations um, some of the misconceptions is is when folks join the city or are part of the city um, they're going to have to do away with some of their large animals, whether it's horses, goats, pigs. Uh, but the city won't won't do that. They won't they won't uh, enforce any of those. Um, what I often heard from my past career is, we want to keep our rural lifestyle. They can still keep that rural lifestyle, and uh, that can still be a part of uh, their property. Um, the last thing I want to touch on is many of these residents are already. Uh, when they go shop in the city paying that one percent increased sales tax but the the downside is is they're not benefiting from it because they're in the county so by being in the city as part of this island annexation we can now invest city dollars that they're already putting into to the the city's uh, revenue uh, we can we can put uh, their streets now on our pavement management system to up, upgrade their streets. We can now have some targeted investment, whether that's sidewalks, uh, curb gutter that they didn't have before that can now be a part of, of the city strategy is to include that and, and will be part of the city strategy um, after these island annexations um, are done. So uh, with that, I, I do want to just uh, I'll let this commission know that the city's committed to reaching out if there are continued problems uh, or concerns that these residents have 
we want to reach across and and have a, a warm handshake of, of uh, trying to eliminate any of those concerns. Uh, Mr. Knox and I had talked earlier about the concern of one of the businesses um, that our planning staff actually had called and, and resolved their concern previously when this information was sent out, uh, not only in, in January of 2021, but also again in March. And that business, Daryl's Mini Storage, got their issue resolved, as, as Mr. Knox had, had mentioned. So it just shows that our planning staff, our development service staff, is very responsive uh, to business concerns, and, and many of these are businesses um, that are in these, these island annexations. The business that expressed its concern, uh, Vulcan, uh, we'd also be very happy to sit down with them. They were given an opportunity to call us, to email us, to uh, put in any sort of written documentation of what their concerns are, and, and they didn't take that opportunity up until uh, less than 24 hours ago. Um, but we'd be happy to sit down with them and, and talk about any of their concerns, whether it's zoning, whether it's their operations, or um, the, the impacts of this annexation. So I'm available to answer any questions, um, but that, that concludes my response. Thank you, Mr. Hallen. Is there other public comment on this item? There is. Yeah. Who do we have? Yeah. Paula Hernandez. Ms. Hernandez, please go ahead. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good evening. Yes, my name is Paula Hernandez, and I'm here um, tonight on behalf of my client, Vulcan Materials Company. And my request this evening is simple. The city is correct that we only got involved 24 hours ago. I, I just wanted to point out Vulcan is a large company, and unfortunately, sometimes documents and notices slip through the cracks. And this is what I believe happened in this instance. And so my firm was only made aware of this notice a few a few days ago. So my request, very, very simple, is just for a brief continuance that will allow my firm to, to service my client, to do the due diligence. I'll commit to doing the due diligence very quickly. And this way, we would be able to evaluate the impacts of the annexation and, and advise our client accordingly as to um, what, what the impact could have on their ownership and operation on the property. Thank you. Thank you. Is there other public comment? No. Is there a commission comment or question? Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes, I uh, had some generic questions uh, for Mr. Allen. Uh, just to uh, first of all, thanks for the uh, planning staff to uh, respond quickly to uh, Daryl's many stories concerns. It's a good customer service. Um, a little bit more background would be useful. When there is a um, unincorporated island annex to the city and there are businesses concerns, in other words, active business land uses, do these businesses get a reprieve from getting a city license, business license, or do they have to get one immediately? Secondly, when they are annexed, are they then a candidate for a fire or code inspection from the city, or is that only as, as needed basis? In other words, complaint. Uh, obviously, the city has a lot of services they provide to businesses and I'm concerned about how that affects a business coming from the county into the city so that they are aware and not surprised of any additional fees or inspections. Can you address my concerns? Sure, let me, let me go to the code enforcement uh, question because that, that one is uh, an easy one. Uh, code, code enforcement is not proactive in the city, so it is, it is a complaint-based uh, code enforcement effort. Um, so there, so I think your your question may be related to if a business, you know, let's say tomorrow is now annexed into the city, uh, will our code go and visit them the next day? No, um, it's it's all based on generated on um, concerns that are brought to the attention of code. Uh, uh, on the business license. Um, I, I need to find out more about when, uh, how, 
uh, soon they would get noticed and then required to uh, be licensed with uh, as it has a business license. However, what I am uh, have the knowledge of right now, I can tell you that I know, uh, not all businesses are required to to uh, be licensed. There are there's kind of a subset, but uh, I'd, I'd like to go back and and research that and get get some information to you on because I believe your question is how quickly will businesses like receive a, a notice that they need to come in and get get their business license upon annexation so I, I'll uh, I'll do some research on that and get back to you are there other Commission questions or concerns Tom? no no Mr. Hallen, you and I have met and had a very nice meeting, and I appreciated your outreach. But I'm going to ask you a couple of tough questions because the Commission knows I disapprove of island annexations no matter what the law says. So, a uh, couple of things. Um, Mr. Esselman, who's the head of your planning department, sends out two letters to each island annexation area. And on the bottom of the letter, he says, if you have any questions, here's my number. But it, it never states a time frame by which someone must require, you know, respond to it. Comment? Um, that's accurate. Um, I think they can respond at whenever they you know, so choose. It's at okay. it's at the businesses or property owners' uh, discretion. Okay. Um, I I I I don't know why there wasn't a time frame. That's a good that's a good point to to uh, share. But uh, it's up until the annexation actually is moving forward that they have a time frame. So mm -hmm. in this example, I wasn't at the city when these letters were sent. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't have purview of reading uh, these letters because I, again, I'm very, very new with the city. Uh, but maybe, and I'm just projecting here, it was thought that we'd send these letters and then have a determination of, of the time, time frame to move forward at a later date because first letter went out and then a second letter went out. So. Okay, um, along with the letter, uh, Frequently asked question document mm -hmm. went out. A brochure went out. I think maps Correct. of the neighborhoods and so on, but no mention of island annexation. And you and I have talked about that before. To me, it's essential if if the city wants to annex uh, a neighborhood, they should be forthright in letting the people know that they're interested in annexing but the people have no right to protest. Um, I think that's a real problem. And as I've said before, more in lecture form, and I apologize to those who've had to listen, I think this is a bad state law. And um, I notice uh, there's absolutely no mention in any of the materials that go out to these people that you say that you're, the city is interested in annexing and then you send out a survey are you interested and in in the cases that we have before us tonight only one person responded in every case and that person was in opposition and this could be where there were six landowners and only one responded no one responded saying yeah let's go with the annexation instead it was always a voice of opposition so I'd be interested in knowing, and I know you're brand new, but why do you think these are not 100% uh, approval for the annexations? They are not, none of them tonight are 100%. Yeah. And you're asking me to speculate uh, and no. get into the head of these uh, <laughs> It, it these might people. be good for someone to do that. Right? Um, <laughs> I, I have no idea. Every, everyone has um, a right to an opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, our job is to express facts and to give factual information so that if there is misinformation or incorrect information, we can, we can try to 
provide that those set of facts to help people make decisions. Mm -hmm. um, that's been my career in government is to try to just state the facts. And um, I'm not, not sure why. Uh, it, I, what I would say about those letters, uh, the surveys, mm -hmm. I would hope that people would tell us why. I wish any of those letters had more details on here's why I don't want to be a part, but none of them did. So I, I, I wish if I could get into the head of these, of these citizens that we could hear a little bit of their concerns, then we could have a, a more dialogue or more information sent to them on X topic or Y topic or Z topic, but none of them expressed their why mm -hmm. they, they opposed. Well, if I could say the survey doesn't ask that question. It does. It does say, please provide comments. Well, that, that's discretionary as well. That's true. Yeah. Um, I wonder how you think some of these people who oppose the annexations will feel learning that LAFCO tonight will have approved their annexation that they opposed. Again, I, I don't want to speculate. <laughs> I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm going to. That was a loaded question. It was. I apologize. It was. It was. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think the city needs to do different outreach, and fairer outreach, and more complete information. Outside of island annexations or any other kind of annexations, your FAQs were great, except they don't mention island annexations. And in America, we really like to be in charge of our own lives. And when we purchase a home, that's the biggest purchase we make. And I think people should have agency to make a decision. And I noticed in your paperwork, you say you want to offer services, but apparently people aren't interested in your services. Now, I'm not saying they wouldn't be in the future, but I think when, when half the people say no they're not interested in annexation that should be a tip off to wait can and i just please uh, respond. respond to that sure. um of of the 15 property owners that were part of all four of these annexations um because i'm talking about them as a whole sure um we we did receive it so the four we received one in each so four an opposition as opposed to uh, 11 that withheld any comment. Mm -hmm. So I, I know it's not 100% approval, but I, I view the non-response, not not a tacit approval, but it, but a non-response is they don't care either way, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not half that oppose. So it's mm -hmm. it's four out of the 15 that, that we had opposition and and one of those four, we resolved that person's concern. Okay. okay. So. Well, I, I think I might argue with you on that point because apathy or um, not understanding the process does not mean approval. And that's the, the old problem with any annexation because annexation ordinarily is protest-based. And when you, when you don't respond, you're assumed to be in favor and that's a problem. So I'll let you off the hook, and you've done a very nice job, and thank you. Thank you. Any other commission comments or questions? Dick Albright. Uh, Commissioner Albright, please go ahead. Yes, uh, <clears throat> isn't there kind of a rule of thumb if these folks had actually initiated the desire to come within the boundaries of the city is there not not a percentage you know relative to that that would allow them to do that 51 percent of the folks who actually own the property mr knox i'm on yeah. if you understand my question we do we do thank you uh commissioner albright uh in a normal annexation um you would have there's two two ways of handling it one is if they did have 100 percent consent there would not need to be a uh, protest hearing the commission could waive their protest hearing 
uh, if it does not have 100% consent and the commission approves it, we then go to protest hearing. Then 50% plus one could overturn the decision of the commission. In this case, the applicant is the city of Bakersfield. There isn't a property owner who is the applicant or behind the application. This is a strategic plan by the city to, to close in these islands um, for some time. So it was not landowner driven. This was uh, city driven in this does, case. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Albright? Well, uh, to use an old expression, kind of, sort of. <laughs> my, I guess my intent is you've got four negatives and 11 silent voters here that may or may not know what is what the full impact is going to be to their their properties so i'm i'm always hesitant whenever i see any protest or any negatives and uh the i don't know is because they're not really educated in the quality of the uh, surround to it that's that's all i have to say thank you mr helen would you like to respond to that yeah i, I would like to um i i think commissioner um the way the way that i would view this is it was an informational campaign and the the letters that um uh, chair fowler was talking about were this is information uh for you uh which i have uh my um a planning staff jose fernandez that uh, actually shared with me there there was a reference to county islands in the informational letter so in 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 the informational letter it did reference county islands um it doesn't say island annexation it that phrase but it does talk about county islands the um the, because this was an informational inform uh, an informational session or packet that we were sharing it's not a vote so calling them voters i don't think is an accurate depiction and maybe uh mr knox you can speak to that but this was again trying to share information uh the it was a it was a courtesy and an extra step to get uh, get their opinion and get their thoughts on the proposal but it was an informational campaign not a not a voter please send us your vote so just just to try to speak to what this was point taken on that if i could read from mr elselman's letter as shown on the attached map, this area is located within County Island, also known as an unincorporated area, blah, blah, blah. So it mentions it's in an island without any reference to island annexation law that would allow annexation without protest. Are there other commission questions or concerns? Then we'll go back, um, Mr. Uh, Knox has recommended that this item not be continued. However, the commission has the right to continue it if we so choose, but I'll wait for a motion either way. Um, Mr. Schroeder? Just, just one comment. Uh, yes. If you do choose to, to continue it, you have to set a date certain for the continuance. Got it. Thank you. So do I hear a motion on this item? What happens if we don't? Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Couch, Supervisor Couch, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we continue this item. Can you hear me? You were cutting out. Please repeat that. OK, I'd like to make a motion that we continue this item and um if they only need 30 days I, i'll the motion is to continue it to our next meeting uh if they would prefer 60. well i don't know i don't know what our schedule is after uh july or august do we do we dark in august mr knox could you respond we are dark in july we are back august 24th so we're looking at two months here before we return so would you okay, so it would be then the motion would be the next meeting would be our august meeting 
Yes, August 24th. Correct? Yes. Okay, then the motion is to continue this item until our regular meeting on August 24th. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion? A second by Commissioner Zaragoza. I don't second. I can't. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Someone beat you to it, Commissioner Ion. Commissioner Zaragoza nope. was the second. No nope, problem. Could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Ion? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Um, yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll go on to uh, noticed, pardon me, determination proceeding uh, 1799 City of Bakersfield and County Service Area 71. City of Bakersfield Annexation 694, Juetta Number 1, and CSA 71, Detachment S, Reorganization and Island Annexation Process. This proposal is to annex approximately 7.76 acres of land, generally east of Juetta Avenue, approximately 120 feet south of Palm Avenue. The annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield, for the purpose of providing city services. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375.3, which requires notice, hearing, and waives protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Juetta number one is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. This annexation meets all requirements in section B of government code section 56375.3 and is therefore eligible for the use of this provision. The zoning both in the county and city are consistent. Uh, this is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation specific plan. There's no ag land conversion. There's not a disadvantage on incorporated community. It's consistent with commission policies and conforms to the assessor parcels. There's no functional overlap other than the CSA, which we are detaching. Uh, there is an adequate water supply as no additional water will be required at this time. There is no tax increase. CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Uh, the, the applicant has provided an indemnification agreement. Uh, affected and overlapping agencies were notified and no comments were provided. We have received inquiries from property owners nearby with concerns about future use of the property, specifically high density residential. I informed the person inquiring about the island annexation process, current and pre-zoning that they are consistent, also provide that a zone change could be requested whether the property is in the city or in the county. Annexation to the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested the protest hearing be waived in accordance with the government code section 56375.3. In review of the application, the city has met all the requirements. As mentioned before, there has not, pu not been a public meeting held by the city of Bakersfield. Their outreach efforts are highlighted in the memorandum in your packet. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission consider the notice of exemption filed by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve annexation 1799 to the city of Bakersfield. This is annexation 694 to the city and detach uh, S of CSA 71. Waiving notice protest hearing as required by government code section 56, 375.3 and subject to condition recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? No. No. Uh, commission comment or questions now? Um, a question for Mr. Schroeder. Is this one motion that would handle this issue? Or do we vote on the detachment separately? No, you can do them together. One, one no, motion. No, if, if there's a difference of opinion among the commissioners, if they want to vote on each one separately, well, then you would. 
Okay. I don't hear that being made. You don't hear anything at all yet. Um, is there a motion on this? Oh, Mr. Knox. Just so you're aware, the CSA 71 is a um, sewer planning um, area. So they would, the only thing they would be losing is uh, sewer planning, not a specific service like street lights or something like that. So um, the city will handle all sewer through that area when this is, when this is Thank complete. You. I do have a question for uh, Mr. Blair. Is there a, uh, um, I assume under the CSA, are they providing sewer services which is closed systems or is it a septic tank uh, service? Everyone in these properties is on septic. I see. It's sewer planning, not actually sewer providing. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. The yeah. city, the city can provide sewer services if they they can if they choose to do so. And, and have they? Maybe this is a Mr. Hallen question. Is that a, a service that the city is going to provide in the future? Are they close close to a sewer line, truck line? Um, I, I think uh, trying to read read what Blair, uh, what uh, Mr. Knox was saying, um, the the county can establish a CSA if they intend to someday provide a sewer. So this uh, sewer planning is it, if they need to someday provide sewer. The city could provide sewer if the residents would like to get get off their septic and connect. To sewer, so the city has a, has a line that they can they can tie to. Uh, is that correct? The line runs down Juetta. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the city line runs down Juetta. Yeah, that's convenient. And there's a, a agreement between the city and county if uh, for use of those lines. So, yeah. yeah. Well, the reason I think that's a good idea is it's uh, more sanitary for the neighborhood if they're on a closed system, and uh, if the city can provide means whether it's a kind of a long-term note with no interest that'd be great yeah. yeah that that would be something the city could provide are there further comments from commissioners do I hear a motion on this item motion from Commissioner Zaragoza to uh, approve Bakersfield annexation number 694 Georgia number one and CSA 71 <laughs> detachment S a motion, Zaragoza. Is there a second? Second, McKibben. McKibben, second. Could we have the roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? No. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? No. <clears throat> Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Four ayes, two noes, motion passes. Thank you. Our next item, uh, 1800 City of Bakersfield County Service Area 71. City of Bakersfield Annexation Number 695, Juetta Number 2, and CSA 71 Detachment T. This proposal is to annex approximately 8.75 acres of land, generally at the northwest corner of Juetta Avenue and Brimhall Road intersection. This annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield to allow for use of city services. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375.3, which requires notice, hearing, and waives protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Juetta number two is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. This annexation meets all the requirements of section B of Government Code section 56 375.3 and is therefore eligible for the use of this provision. Uh, the zoning is consistent between the county and the city. Uh, the zoning between the county and the pre-zoning of the city is consistent. It's consistent with a general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There's no ag land conversion. 
There's no disadvantage unincorporated community. It's consistent with commission policies, conforms to the assessor's parcels. There, there will be no functional overlap with the detachment of the CSA. Water supply is adequate as no additional water will be required. There's no tax increase. CEQA is handled by notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Uh, identification agreement has again been provided. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. We have received inquiries from a property owner within the annexation that is concerned with his continued use of the property for his equestrian business. Uh, that separate property owner has signed that he is not in favor of the annex. A separate property owner has signed that he is not in favor of an annexation. As, as such, annexation to the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that protest hearing be waived in accordance with government code section 56375.3. In review of the applicant, the city has met all of these requirements. As mentioned before, that there has not been a public meeting held by the city of Bakersfield. The, this is two properties, their outreach effort are highlighted in the uh, memorandum in your packet. A process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that consider, the commission consider the notice of exemption followed by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve the annexation 695 Juetta number no. 2 to the city of Bakersfield with, a detach, with detachment T of CSA 71 Waive, waiving notice to protest hearing as required by government code section 56375.3 and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Whew. Yeah. Is there public comment on this item? Please come forward and state your name. Do we need an address? An address, please. Uh, yes, uh, 1249 Joetta right the corner. Um, my name is George Castanares, the owner of such a uh, property. I'm here to oppose the annexation. In the future, maybe uh, I will go for annexation in defense of the negotiation between me and the city. When I acquired this uh, property 18 years ago, I wasn't interested in this uh, property. I was approached by uh, Tandis Group, which is a city engineer's office, to buy this property so that they can uh, expand or widen the road Joe and Brimhall. And we discussed that of what's going to be in me. And he told me that uh, you can do anything you want, what you want to build in this uh, in this. Uh, property and I told him okay if that's the case I want to, uh, this thing as a rezoning it to OC that's office commercial he said no problem and it was uh, the application was uh, submitted and the commissioner approved it but it's a conditional is the neighborhood will be decide of what kind of building or what kind of uh, zoning the, uh, they're going to build on that, on that property. Tandis Group decide to appeal it to the city council, which is they did, appeal it to the city council, and there was a hearing. And Mr. Couch denied the zoning change. I have a question uh, for you, Mr. Couch. Before you, uh, b before you made a decision on that uh, hearing, you call a meeting with me in your office. What are those meetings all about? Because it only took less than five minutes. We're just looking to each other, eye to eye. And then you address it. I'll see you at the hearing tomorrow. After that, uh, after that uh, meeting with you, I was sitting in the parking lot thinking of what are those meeting all about. Now you can tell me, Mr. Couch, of what this meeting all about. Because you're the one who called a meeting with me, one on one, without saying anything. We're just looking at eye to eye, and you decide 
and the next response you have, I'll see you at the hearing tomorrow. Or she, there you go. And uh, when you decided, you denied uh, the, the zoning change. What is it on me? That's a failed of a city engineer's office. That they are the one who approached me to buy this property. <coughs> I spent seven thousand five hundred to spice the, the the to the presentation of the city engineer's office. I hired an architect to draw a site plan. There was a three buildings in it. It's a gated one. There's two entrance. One in Juwedo, one in Brim Hall. It was a really nice plan. Now you can tell me, uh, Mr. Couts, of what those are meeting all about. Because I still, until now, 18 years, after 18 years, I still haunt me. I still find an answer from you that I don't have nothing to satisfy on those meetings. And I, I was with you, uh, Commissioner uh, Fowler. In this article uh, that uh, the state uh, passed, that the, the, the landowner or the property owner, it's, uh, there's no say to a nation. It's a city, whatever the city loves to do it. Us, the property owner, cannot say anything. Cannot stop this annexation. I'm not. Uh, I'm not against the annexation. I want a firm agreement between me and the city of what we're gonna do about that property, because I waited 18 years for this, because I was waiting for the city to approach me to make a negotiation of what we're gonna do about this property. I have a question for you, sir. Did you receive the outreach letters from the Planning Commission of the City of Bakersfield, Mr. Esselman? No, uh, this one, uh, I, have, I have this uh, notice. It was uh, the property uh, behind, my, um, behind uh, Joera, the one, the gated community, it was a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He called me, he said, hey, George, did, did you see this uh, uh, letters that uh, your property is about to annex to the city. Go no, and he gave me this. Uh, he gave me this uh, papers. I didn't even know about it. All right. Would it be appro appropriate for Mr. Couch to make a response if he chooses to? If he chooses to, yeah, happy to. All, all, no, all discussion. Must I go don't. Through uh, you, though, I have Madam a lot Chair. of meetings, but I do not recall anything <laughs> of what he's talking about. Um, I've been gone from the city for about 10 years and I couldn't quite understand it all, but I don't, I can see him. I don't recognize him. I don't remember anything of what he just said, but I'd be happy to talk to him. <clears throat> Thank you. Do you have any further questions or comments? We've given you a little bit more time than is typical. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, well. Maybe later. <laughs> All right. Thank <laughs> you. When I mean, the city approach, uh, if you guys postpone this uh, annexation, if you guys disapprove this annexation, we can always uh, come back for uh, to negotiate. All right. Thank you. Because I'm open to it. Thank you, sir. All right. Is there other public comment? No. Are there comments from the commission? Well, I have a quick one. Um, again, I go to the outreach being insufficient. And if I'm not correct, I think I am correct, there are two landowners in this annexation. One, you have a survey that says he opposed it, and then you have this gentleman who spoke tonight. So that's 100% opposition to the annexation. For that reason, I'm going to really double my no vote I guess I'm only allowed one vote but um, that that does not smell right so without other Commission comments or questions let's I'll listen for a motion 
Chair, I have a question. Uh, Mr. Ayon, go ahead. I thought I thought there was one owner that had given consent. Uh, didn't Mr. Uh, Knox uh, express that? Uh, up until tonight, uh, George had not uh, had not provided anything that said whether he approved or didn't approve. Correct. Correct. So this is the first we've heard from him. But there was another response yeah. in the packet, which was in opposition. Correct. Mr. I can't pronounce okay. his name. Okay. Other comments from the commission? Ferreira. I'm waiting to hear a motion on this item. Motion to approve McKibben. McKibben to approve as this both the detachment and the annexation. Yes. Okay. McKibben motion. Chair Fowler. Yes. Who's speaking? Uh, no. I am. Uh, Commissioner Albright has his hand raised. All right, Commissioner Albright, go ahead. Yes, I kind of missed the timeline on there as to the date time of the meeting that this gentleman had with Supervisor Couch. Was there? Was I just not listening? I think we can say many years ago. He hasn't been on the city council for a number of years. I'd be interested in knowing when it was, too. Gentleman believes it's 18 years. I'm waiting for a second to this motion. Second. Was that Albright? Albright. Thank you. May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon. No. Commissioner Couch. Yes. Commissioner Albright. Hey. Commissioner Fowler. No. Commissioner McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Sanders. No. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Three ayes, three noes, motion fails. Madam Chair, can I make a motion that we continue this to our August meeting as well? Now that we have that voted. It's Madam Clerk, I counted differently than yes. you. Four ayes, three, three noes. Motion passes. Thank oh. you. Motion passes. Sure. I withdraw that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry Thank about that. you. All right. 1801, City of Bakersfield. Annexation number 697, TAF number 3, Island Annexation Process. This proposal is to annex approximately 19.54 acres of land, generally north of Taft Highway, approximately one-eighth mile east of Mountain Ridge Drive. The annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield to allow for the use of city services. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375 Point three, which requires notice hearing and waves protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Taft number three is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. This annexation meets all requirements in section B of government code section 56375.3 and is therefore eligible for the use of this provision. The zoning is consistent between the county and the pre-zoning with the city. It's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific and Pacific specific plan. There's no ag land conver conversion. There's no disadvantaged community. It's consistent with commission policies. It conforms to the assessor parcels. There's no functional overlap. Um, there actually is a CSA that overlaps with this. Um, the CSA provides um, crosswalk guards that it, the, it's been inactive the county shows that the CSA doesn't exist but we show it does 
At this time, we're still researching it, and we may come back at a later date to, to detach it from this area. It's not causing an issue. There's no uh, conflict of services here, uh, so it can continue to, to be placed there. But it is a little strange for us. Mm -hmm. um, there is adequate water supply, as no additional water will be required. There's no increase in taxation. Uh, notice of exemption is handled by a notice, uh, CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption. Uh, we have an indemnification agreement from the city. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. Of the three properties, we have not received inquiries from within the, the annexation. A property owner, the, uh, the church, has signed that they are not interested in, in being an annexed at this time. Annexation of the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that protest hearing be waived in accordance with the government code section 56375.3. In review of the application, the city has met all the requirements. Again, this has not been a public meet. There has not been a public meeting held by the city of Bakersfield. Um, their outreach efforts are highlighted in the memorandum in your packet. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission consider the notice of exemption followed by the applicant. It's further recommended that the commission approve annexation 697 Taft Highway number three to the city of Bakersfield, waiving notice protest hearing as required by government code section 56375.3 and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? Yes, please come forward and state your name and address. My name is Norm Aycock, and my address is 7304 Terry John Avenue in Bakersfield. I am the pastor of the church that is within this annexation uh, bid, and uh, we do not uh, stand in opposition. However, uh, we would like to make a couple of notes uh, to you all. Our history with this potential annex goes back to 2007. There have been two different negotiations with the city. One was in 2008 and the other was 2019. So this has been an important issue with the church and has been reported to the church congregation as per our constitution and bylaws. Uh, just so you're aware, we have a, and maintain a regular uh, set of office hours. Our secretary is present on the property Monday through Thursday uh, from about 7.30 in the morning till two in the afternoon. We check the mail on a regular basis and we received nothing from the city about this ever. We have not received any letters from the city, no surveys, uh, so I find this to be uh, a problematical at least. Uh, in addition, we have not received anything from LAFCO except this letter, which we received in June of this uh, month, June 6th. The date of the letter is March 19th. So assuming that, uh, assuming that the mail took a few days, we have had just a lot, about two weeks to consider this ourselves. We have made phone calls to the city and to LAFCO with requests and questions. Uh, the suggestion was we need to come to this meeting, which we were planning to, to do. So that's information for you. Uh, we would ask today from you for a continuance to the next uh, meeting because we have not had the time to discuss this with the city planners. There are two or three issues that uh, have been at issue in our negotiations with the past, and we would like to negotiate and discuss with uh, the city uh, the issue of our zoning and uh, sign requirements. Uh, Caltrans is about to uh, move to take part of our property as they begin to, uh, to uh, widen 119 Taft Highway. We have already received, received packets and sent them uh, various uh, uh, information on their request of what the landscape, I mean the hardscape would cost to replace and they have given us a bid which was based 
on uh, land that wasn't even near the value of ours, so we have come back with uh, uh, a counter. We have not heard back from them an answer. We will have to redo our sign, which is presently in that area that will be taken. So we believe and we understand from previous negotiations that the restrictions from the city are more restrictive for a sign than the county. And we would like to negotiate and talk to the county about that. In addition, uh, we would like to talk with the county, uh, with the city, I mean we'd like to talk with the city about that. We'd like to talk with the city also about petition, potential costs for uh, connecting to city sewer and city water so that we can know what we're looking at. We have not been given any information about that. Previously, before residential moved close to us, we were looking at several hundred yards away from us to hook up from for water and for sewer. And so previously that was the big, the big problem because uh, it would have been hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to connect up and then change over from uh, septic to sewer and from the well water to city water. So these are our concerns. We would like to request a continuance to the next meeting, please. Thank you. Is there other public comment? Madam Clerk, is there more public comment? No. Commission comment or yes. questions? Commissioner Zaragoza has a few comments for the pastor. Yes. What was your last name, Pastor? My last name is Acock. Acock. Thank you for approaching and letting us know that you didn't receive uh, any mailed uh, uh, surveys of any type. That's unusual. Um, uh, when it comes to your uh, congregation do you typically have like a board meeting in order to discuss business information like this and if so do you do you meet like once a month or something like that so on the continuance are you asking until august are you was we just wanted to be kind of certain on the deadline yes we're asking till august 24th uh, okay. i believe is your next meeting yeah. uh, that would give us time for our business affairs uh, committee to meet we okay. have a monthly meeting of business affairs committee which handles right. uh the financial arrangements and needs of our church. That's very reasonable. Question from Mr. Helen. Is your notices to uh, folks in these annexation areas regarding uh, to get a, an opinion or survey information, are they certified mail? How, how does it go out? So uh, like Mr. Knox had mentioned, we use the same mailing address that's given to us by the county auditor controller. So when they get their tax bill, it's the same address. So this it's unclear why if they get their tax bill at that address, um, they are not getting our mailer. Um, so I'm at that's So it's regular postage. Um, that's correct. Hmm. Interesting. Mr. Hallen, are you willing to make sure he gets the mailings that should have reached him earlier? I will. Mr. I, Knox, did you have a comment? I do have a comment because I've got a survey here uh, from a pastor, Mitchell B. Minson, at 5446 Taft Highway in opposition to this annexation. I'm looking at the same one. So I'm a little confused. So it appears like someone got it. What is the date on that? It's not dated. It's not dated. Pastor Mitchell uh, Minson was the previous pastor up until the end of August of this past year. Uh, I'm at a loss to know how he received that or when he received it, uh, simply because I have not contacted, been, been in contact with him. Our secretary uh, has been there through this whole period and she was not aware and did not remember any kind of uh, uh, correspondence between uh, Mitch Minson and the uh, and the city so while I accept that you received it I was not aware of that and we are not in opposition to it at this time uh, we're just simply concerned with costs that we may have to deal with and what does that mean for our future but uh, also in the, the most immediate issue is the sign and uh, what kind of uh, restrictions we may now be looking at if we're talking about uh, city restrictions and what kind of zoning we would be going into. Presently, as I talked to the city planner, I talked with uh, Jose Fernandez uh, at the city 
and he uh, indicated to me that we are presently under the ag zoning and that that would continue on as far as the city was concerned we're not certain that that is the best zoning for us we'd like to talk with the city about that and uh, see if that can be changed if it's necessary or if it would be beneficial to us uh, so one of the things that of course I would remind you as a church uh, because of separation of church and state we do not pay property taxes and uh, this is really of no real benefit uh, that I can see to the county uh, except that it may be benefit to I mean to the city except that it may be benefit to the county because they don't have to come across city lines to uh, <laughs> to service us does that answer our the questions I was asked further questions for the pastor just to be clear you're as a current pastor you're saying you're not opposed to the annexation you're just asking for continuance for various good reasons I think signage hardscape utility connections etc and you're willing to have that um, at our August 24th meeting. Yeah. That is correct. Re reviewed. Okay, that's a reasonable request. Thank you. Thank you. Commission comments or questions, or I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner Albright has raised his hand. Commissioner Albright, go ahead. Well, yes, I, I thank you. I took my hand down because uh, I concur that this all seems like it's going to go forward uh, to continue, and I encourage that that's all I have did you want to make that in the form of a motion sir a move so move to continue to August 24th is there a second second Commissioner Zaragoza Zaragoza second could we have a roll call please Commissioner Ayon aye Commissioner Couch yes Commissioner Albright aye Commissioner Fowler yes Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. We now go to commission items, and I'm going to trade places with Commissioner McKibben. Okay, thank you, uh, Chair Fowler. Um, we're now on to 8A, um, restricted public member and alternate. There will be a vote required. Interview and selection of restricted public member and restricted public member and alternate applicants. Mr. Knox. Yeah, to start, I've asked Chair Fowler to hand over the chair position to Vice Chair Gary McKibben. It's not appropriate for Commissioner Fowler to serve as chair when she is a candidate for the appointment. <laughs> Uh, Commissioner McKibben has graciously, graciously agreed to take the reins. Tonight we have, uh, I, I believe, four candidates, but I have not seen the fourth uh, yet. So we may only have three candidates to fill the restricted public member seat and the alternate on Kern Lafco. The term restricted refers to who among the commissioners can vote on this item. Only the two Board of Supervisors and two Special District Commissioners will vote on this item tonight. Commissioners Zaragoza, Parlier, Aon, and Albright will need to sit this one out. In the packet is information on all four. I have asked each to make a short presentation to make their pitch as to why they should be the restricted public member. It is at the discretion of the chair how long each candidate can speak. I took the liberty of asking them to not go much beyond five minutes. Commissioners can ask questions of each candidate at any time. Once we get through all four candidates, uh, there will need to be a motion and vote on the restricted public member. Once that seat is filled, there will need to be a second motion and vote for the alternate public member. Thank you all for your interest. My recommendation to the commission is to hear out all four candidates and choose the best of the two to serve for the next four years. Oh, the in alphabetical order, we'll have uh, Barbara Fowler, Jose Gonzalez, Alicia Hickson, and Donald Longquist. I'm Barbara Fowler. I've served as an alternate for a number of years and also have served as the restricted public member. And uh, it's been a very interesting period of time. Is that coming? 
you're on, Barbara. See that green light on the side? Also, I can't hear. Thank you. I have no tech ability at all, at I'll admit. But I have enjoyed serving on LAFCO both as an alternate and as a commissioner. And I find it very interesting. I'm always prepared. I don't always agree with everyone, but I think we have kind of a good collegiality among the members of the commission, which is important in government. Um, I'm a Bakersfield native, attended Bakersfield High School, go Drillers, Bakersfield College. I have a uh, AA degree in elementary education. I continued at UC Berkeley, but did not degree. Um, I'm the mother of two adult daughters, have three grandkids. I've been involved in the community in a number of ways, uh, but one of the major things I've, I've done is I've been a 30 plus year member of Assistance League of Bakersfield uh, and it's a wonderful philanthropic organization that dresses needy school kids for school and the past year we dressed over 3,000 kids so I'm delighted to have participated in that prog prog um, project. If you have questions, hit me. That's under five minutes. That was about two. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Fowler. Um, Jose Gonzalez would be next. He's he's on Zoom, and I think I'm going to try to shut that door over. I think they're leaving. They're leaving. So, a little noisy. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, glad to be here today, and. Um, being here, uh, being on this meeting again. Um, I've served the community of Bakersfield for well over 24 years. Um, I wanted to uh, thank each one of you for giving me the opportunity to be, serve as an alternate the last couple years. Um, but over the years, I've had the opportunity to uh, serve uh, different boards within the community and um, been able to serve in the Greater Lamont Chamber of Commerce as a president, as a vice president, and uh, been able to serve the community there well um, through uh, food distributions, uh, community cleanups, com uh, events that uh, we've created for the community to better the community of Lamont and our event. Um, I've also served as treasurer for um, the uh, Kiwanis Club of Arvin in Lamont. I've uh, been able to support the efforts there to better serve our local kids. Um, I'm also a director with the, uh, with the Kern County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and been serving uh, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce for several years now, um, helping uh, the local community in Bakersfield. I'm also the vice president of Strata, um, uh, Strata Credit Union. I've uh, been serving in this capacity, uh, being able to help uh, local community members access to financial resources. And I've also enjoyed the opportunity to serve on the AB 617 committee, um, uh, advocating for uh, cleaner air for our community and our uh, areas, especially in the areas of Lamont and Arvin. Um, I've also uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to serve um, as a volunteer um, in several clubs within our community to serve our, our local kids and residents, um, coordinating local cleanups in the area. And I've really enjoyed making a difference in our community and allowing me to continue to um, serve as an alternate, uh, especially with the uh, 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 LAFCO um, gives me that opportunity to continue to serve our community and continue to make a difference. Um, throughout my career, I've made it a point that any capacity or any position that I serve, I make sure that um, um, I serve our residents, our kids, and be able to make a difference in anyone's life. Um, I believe that, um, you know, we only get that one shot here. Um, God puts us on this earth to help each other as brothers and sisters. So um, I have a great belief that that's what we're here to do. And um, 
if elected to serve a couple more years, I'd love to continue to make a difference and um, uh, on the board and in our community. Thank you. Okay. Next uh, would be Alicia Hickson. Okay. Um, Hello. Go ahead. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Alicia Hickson, and I've been a Kern County resident for my entire life. Uh, most recently, I was the associate vice president at The Wonderful Company, working primarily in our rural communities of Lost Hills and Delano. And I'm interested in being on um, being a commissioner or a, a community member um, on this board because I am interested in the well-being of Kern County. Um, I have served our children and families in the capacity of director of a family resource center. I um, have uh, I currently least sit on uh, the Early Childhood Council of Kern and have been a member for the past six years. I am deeply interested in the planning of our county and the projects. Uh, tonight has been a delightful um, opportunity for me to learn about what's um, on the dockets uh, for LAFCO as of present. And I currently stepped away from my corporate career at the beginning of this year. So I have plenty of time to get familiar with all of the meeting materials um, because I am in a mid-career sort of retirement at the moment. Um, I would love to be um, a public member and uh, look forward to hearing your decision. Thank you. Ch Chair McKibben, um, Don Lundquist has, has not been on the call or in the room, so we will not have a presentation from him. Furthermore, we've got an interesting situation at the moment. Uh, Commissioner Couch had to step away for a moment. We need him to be here to have a third a quorum of at least three people for a vote to be taken. So my suggestion is that we hold off on this vote and come back to it later in the meeting, um, if that's okay with you, Chair McKibben. Yes, that's fine. Uh, so we'll just uh, proceed uh, to the next uh, agenda item and, and come when, back. When he comes back, we uh, will come back to a vote for... Okay. Yes. I think Rebecca's motioning something. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to get Barbara out of the... <laughs> Out of the room. I asked him about that. He says this is fine. Okay. It's not a proceeding like right. a normal. Okay. <laughs> yes. We don't have a quorum, so we've. Uh, uh, couch uh, oh, had to leave. Uh, well, so if he comes back, he we'll then vote. He's coming back. And then we'll go back to that when he gets back. Oh, I see. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Well, that's okay. pretty anticlimactic, isn't it? <laughs> 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 All right. Miss Hickston, Hickston, did you understand what's going on here? Yes. Okay. We need, we need a third vote, and he will be back shortly. He's dealing with a car issue. I think no he's problem. stranded on the side <laughs> of a road. So we'll come back to this uh, uh, fairly quickly. So let's go on to general business, number nine on our agenda. Um, approval of monthly expense list 22-05. Um, Mr. Knox, do you have a comment about that? Nope. Are there commission comments or questions? May I hear a motion? Motion by Commissioner Zaragoza. To Zaragoza approve. motion, thank you. Second, McKibben. McKibben, second. Could we have the roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. 
Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Albright? Commissioner Albright? All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Next is protest hearing results, 1792, City of Delano and CSA 72, City of Delano Annexation 55, and Dissolution of County Service Area 72. This annexation was approved by resolution number 0-07, excuse me, 20-07, at the May 25th meeting. A protest hearing will be conducted from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. on June 21st, 2022, at the City of Delano Council Chambers. Conducting authority results will be announced at the meeting. Mr. Knox. Yeah, this is the Voice of America property that was approved at the last meeting. Uh, we did hold a protest hearing yesterday at the chambers of the Delano City Hall. Four people attended. We actually had more staff there than people who attended. Uh, none of, of those who came were against the annexation, but wanted to speak against low-income housing and the gang activity that appears to be associated with this type of development. One had a question about his permit for a home business. Uh, all of those questions were answered. We have received no protest on this annexation. Therefore, it's my recommenda recommendation to accept the results of the protest hearing and direct staff to complete the annexation process. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? No. no. A commission comment or questions? Commissioner Zaragoza. Right, thank you. I have a question for staff. Um, just to uh, confirm, um, a protest, protest hearing um, is this a hearing that the city promotes an outreach or is it something LAFCO does and it is my understanding that any type of votes on that protest hearing are um, basically counted by LAFCO staff not by anyone else so if you could just explain how that works I appreciate it Correct. Once it is approved, the, the, format, the annexation is approved by this commission, uh, we have a certain amount of time in which to hold a protest hearing. Uh, we also have to at least give 21 days notice of the protest hearing, and that goes out to all the property owners. Um, is, this, is this a, um, we sent it out to everyone within 300 feet on this one as well. No. No. We did not. Yes, just registered voters and landowners get this um, this notice so we're the only ones who provide the notice and again it's this it's the same uh, tax roll that we use for all our other notices the notices are generated here we staffed us correct so the city provides the location for the protest hearing. We, we are required to do it uh, in or near the location mm -hmm. of the annexation and so I asked the city if we could use their their chambers sure since it is my understanding that the, um, well, there's a difference between the population and the landowners, but the population in Delano, based on the 2020 census, is predominantly Hispanic. Correct. Is there a need for bilingual services in the event a landowner cannot, cannot basically uh, make their, their comments known in English? How does that work? Actually, we did have, um, two different people that could pr provide translation. One was a planning staff for the city of Delano, and the other was uh, Patty Man Manchaca, our clerk, attended with me. So we, we were able to, uh, actually all four people who, well, three of the four only spoke Spanish oh. that, that came. So we were able to answer their questions and Good to know. And, and translate yeah. that way. Uh, the the um, notice itself only goes out in English, though. It does not go out in multiple languages. The, currently, there's no requirement that it go out in more than one language? There's not. Okay. Is, is the meeting recorded or is it just note taking? Note taking. And what it comes down to is we get these, these forms, and if we get 50 plus one forms, then we, the pro protest hearing 
it, the protest hearing really isn't a hearing as uh -huh. much as it is an opportunity to ask and answer questions and collect um, the paperwork necessary. Okay. So it's not a if somebody's asking the question, you're not recording that. It's just a Correct. verbal dialogue. Okay. Uh, well, let me let me back up. When we were holding these meetings by Zoom, we did record those meetings. I went ahead and recorded them, oh. so there was a record of what happened. But when it's just in a city hall or a community hall or some other okay. location, we don't have that capability. All right. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Yep. Okay. Are there other commission questions or comments? Do I hear a motion on this item? Motion by Commissioner Zaragoza to approve. Zaragoza motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. May we have a roll call, please? Right. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Albright? Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Did you hear my aye? I did. Thank you. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is Citizens Advisory Committee on Annexation Dissolution. Um, Mr. Knox. I got a text from Commissioner Couch that he may be back on. Can we check and see whether he's back with us? Mr. Couch, are you there? It shows that he left again. Oh, okay. I tried. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. Mr. Knox. Yes. We are on Citizen Advisory Committee on Annexation, correct? Yes. At the last meeting, this commission voted to not support the county's attempt to dissolve the Citizen Advisory Committee on Annexation. On behalf of the commission, I submit a letter to the county CAO informing him of the commission's position. Last week, the CAO responded with a request to send the item back to county staff for further review. Based on past experience, it is my uh, belief that this item will not come back to the Board of Supervisors anytime soon. For the time being, the advisory committee will remain on the county's list of committees. Thank you. Any questions or statements about that? Let's go on to executive office or miscellaneous items. Thank you. Uh, getting towards the end here. As you might remember, we are still holding a special district election. Um, we did not receive a quorum of all the special districts uh, in our deadline. Uh, in conjunction with in the requirements of Cortese Knox Hertzberg, I have to continue it for 60 days. That 60 days ends June 30th. So next week. We should have a result. I do have enough to have a quorum now, but any special districts that still want to provide um, a ballot, they're more than welcome to do so. Uh, once the, um, the, the time ends, I will get together with the chair of the Kern County Special Districts Association to count the ballots and bring them back to you at the August meeting. So the deadline is June 30th? June 30th, validity? yes. All right. Any questions about that report? Well, I got more re report. Oh, go right ahead. Yes. Uh, we've also talked about the Cal AFCO Fall Conference. Uh, I will send out information when registration opens. Uh, we are checking to see when that happens. Uh, legislation. I continue to track legislation in Sacramento that is specific to LAFCO through my representation on the CSDA Legislative Committee. In my writing of this report, I wrote, while there's nothing, immediate, there's nothing of immediate danger, any assemblyman or senator can gut and amend a bill at the end of the session and cause issues, which is exactly what happen, what's happened. Uh, SB 739 by Senator Cortese is a bill to streamline the process of turning golf courses into housing units. Why is this a LAFCO problem? Because the bill requires LAFCO to approve any action required with a streamlined process. Again, this is kind of like um, our island annexation. The discretion is taken away from this commission. And um, 
we don't have anything that looks like a streamlined process. We only have one process. Uh, we only have a discretionary process. Um, it has been the policy of this committee that any bill that takes away discretionary authority from the commission uh, to make uh, decisions based on the facts and local conditions is something both Colonel Lafco and other uh, Lafcos around the state oppose. It sh it, as I noted, uh, we do not have a st st separate streamlined process for handling an annexations <coughs> that are mandatory or otherwise. Creating a separate process would likely be time consu consuming and legally suspect. I will continue to track this bill and provide strategy to, to either see this bill die or LAF LAFCO's discretionary authority uh, retained. Over the years, I've talked about Kern Valley Resource Conservation District, was, which is an inactive district, district that has it's been inactive for well over two decades. Uh, I've been looking to dissolve that district, but also in that process, that area does need services that a resource conservation district can provide. I recently had a conversation with Department of Conservation in, in Sacramento with a new budget, with the governor uh, and state legislator believing they have a lot of money on their hands to give away. This may be the year to, to get that money. Uh, one of the issues I have is we thought Tehachapi Resource Conservation District would be the most uh, ideal to take this, but they have some internal strife at the moment. Um, so I'm not sure where we stand with them at the right now. Uh, one of the other alternate al alternatives would be East Kern Resource Conservation District. Commissioner Sanders, uh, you and I need to have a conversation about this sometime soon. So it's, it's something that continues to be ongoing. Uh, the city of Bakersfield is in development of changes in their general plan. And how does this affect LAFCO? The city staff asked to delay their MSR several months so that it would coincide with their general plan. This way the two documents are consistent and much of the information is shared between both documents. Depending on the changes to be considered, there is a possibility of a request of an SOI amendment. I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that we're at the end of our fiscal year. We will come in under budget again and use a portion, which is 25% of the leftover funds to pay down the reti retirement unfunded liability. While staff bonuses would be nice, the leftover funds, that 75%, are actually used to reduce the assessment for the 2022-2023 assessment on the county, cities, and special <coughs> districts. A couple years ago, we talked about a uh, commission retreat to, to Hawaii on that money, and it, that, that didn't go anywhere either. Um, last, well, lastly of my comments, uh, Rebecca Moore is not officially leaving LAFCO, but it might be the last time the commission sees her for a while. Starting July 1st, she will be working for us on an as needed basis and won't be attending commission meetings unless we need some, someone to, fill, to be filled in for. For last year, she has stepped in and put things in order, regularly questioning Bud and my decisions, mostly Bud's. Even though she will be taking a lesser role in our data operations, uh, there's no way Rebecca is lesser in any way at all. Uh, she will always be part of the, the LAFCO family. And I just want to thank her for all that she's done for us this last year and really appreciate her stepping in. And that's the end of my report. Let's do a shout out to Com Commissioner Couch. Are you there? We're going to go to closed session, Commission. I do have a uh, follow-up uh, question. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Zaragoza. All right. Maybe I missed it. Is there any status update on the RFP for backup legal services? Good question. Um, I put out the RFP. Their deadline is June 30th as well. Okay. Um, since we're we're dark next month, that gives. Uh, Tom and I have some time to go through their their request their RFP responses. I received two so far uh, out of the four firms that we have we have sent out an RFP to. Um, so we know we're going to get we're going to have some 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 something to bring back to you. And this would be August twenty fourth. Correct. And this would be for approval. Well, I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, I have not reviewed the two that we have. Right. Uh, they if, if it's within budget, uh, more likely you may make a, re a recommendation for approval. 
assuming it's qualified. That being the case, uh, my, my concern would be this is a little bit urgent, in my opinion. So if we could get something on board by fall, it'd be great. That's my personal opinion. So the, the way this works is that they would work on an hourly basis. Right. So it would be however much work we give them. Uh, there is a possibility we could do something like have an agreement with both of them. If one of them has a specific expertise that is needed by us, say they have a sequent expertise, um, we may want to use them for that specific sure. process. And if the, another firm has a expertise in another area, um, we could use that firm that way. So it's not necessarily a one or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, there's multiple choices we could make here on, on how we handle this. I think that's a good idea. Um, but I, I do believe in the event um, our esteemed uh, attorney has to excuse himself because of a conflict of interest, I would like to know that there is a backup attorney that we can refer to if needed in order so we don't put ourselves in any liability if we have to make a decision. Correct. And that, that's where my comfort level is right now. I need to see that hopefully soon. And I think having two on board to choose from would be great. That's in the past, um, there was a situation where there was some uh, CEQA um, analysis we need from an attorney. That's not Tom's main area of expertise, and he, re he requested we went to our then backup attorney and have him take a look at it instead of Tom himself. Yeah, so that, that's that kind of situation that we're talking about. All right. Thanks for the update. Okay. Are there any other commission questions of Mr. Knox's report? Before we move to closed session, um, it doesn't appear that uh, Commissioner Couch will be back, which means we probably need to continue this item until August. Do you need a motion? Uh, you, Madam Chair, can continue it if you get no objections from the other commissioners. Are there objections to me continuing with the meeting? Actually, I think uh, Commissioner McKibben should be the one who 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 chairs this item uh, let me just interrupt with a quick thank you to Rebecca Moore you have been invaluable to this organization thank you so much and I think the person thanking you most may not be Mr. Knox it might be Mrs. Menchaca <laughs> thank you so Commissioner McKibben do you want to continue the Restricted public member do item. Do I until need a vote on this to continue it? Um, it's entirely up to you. You can do it yourself if you don't get any objections from other commissioners. If there, there's no if, <clears throat> if there's no objections, I would like to continue this. Um, so, if any commissioners have any um, objections on this? Uh, uh, if not, I just want to continue the item until August 24th. Done. Okay. Barbara, we're now in closed session, I guess. All right, let me read. Commission will now go to closed session. Because we're holding this meeting by video conference, anyone from the public, agencies, or staff attending in person, please wait in the area outside the conference room. Anyone from the public or agencies on the video conference will be placed in the Zoom waiting room until closed session is complete. We've returned from closed session. Uh, Mr. Schroeder, do you have a report? Yes, just uh, the minutes should reflect that no action was taken in closed session. Thank you. If there's no additional business to come before the meeting, our next meeting will be August 24th, 2022. We are adjourned.